Cheers, everybody. Oh, hello. You're just in time for my daily quarantine happy hour. Hi, I'm Leslie. My name is Jason Weber, and I'm a sales rep. And good evening, you're a top leader. And also, you're a top leader. And also, you're a top leader. And also, you're a top leader. To me, a top taster is somebody who really appreciates whiskey, does a lot of tasting, but it's more than that. It's someone who can make other people's whiskey experience special. 2009, I met my wife. Quickly discovered we were both Maker's Mark drinkers at the time, went out and got a ring made of Maker's Mark barrel stave, and got married. Hey, over here, pick me. I'm full of caramel and sweets and fruit. <laughs> You're gonna love me. Rather than just tell you why I think I should be the world's top whiskey taster, instead, I thought I'd just show you. I am the world's okayest whiskey taster. I was pretty content with that title. And then I found out that the Bardstown Bourbon Company was trying to trying to crown the, the world's best, most fantastic, the greatest whiskey taster on the planet. Well, that's me. It's me. I like to uh, smell with my mouth open uh, so I don't burn my olfactory nerve with the ethics. Very full bodied oily coats the tongue oh my gosh the full bodiness of that the sweetness but not too sweet unreal wow this is a completely unique bourbon i mean i'm walking into every little hole in the wall liquor store in this country every time i travel i want to meet the people behind it everything that has to do with it i mean when i tell you that i nerd out more for steve nally than i do for steve martin you know i'm telling the truth Seth and I are finishing the bottle of Mark. Thank you, Steve, for sharing very well. Guys, and that's how it's done. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the regional semifinals for World's Top Whiskey Taster. My name is Sam Montgomery. I am the national brand ambassador for Bardstown Bourbon Company. And I am very excited to be the host for this evening's event. If you have been keeping up with us, then you know we are getting very close to rounding out all of these semifinals and having all of our regional winners. So far, we have crowned winners from eight different regions of the country. We have just two more to go. And tonight we have contestants from what we're calling the Mid-Atlantic region. So you're going to see contestants from New York, DC, Baltimore, West Virginia, and several other, other parts of the East Coast. The winner tonight will move on to our finals hosted right here at our distillery to compete against the other regional finalists to see if they have what it takes to become the world's top whiskey taster. If this is your first time watching, then you might be wondering how exactly we're going to decide who moves on and what it's going to take for one of these contestants to prove they have what it takes. Well, Bardstown Bourbon Company sent each contestant a challenge kit, which they all have right in front of them as I speak. And inside these kits are four mystery whiskeys that correspond to four unique challenges that each contestant will go through tonight. We are going to challenge them to see if their palates can determine proof, age, whiskey type, and finishing barrel. Each challenge will get a little bit harder as well as increase in potential points. Their scores will be posted live in real time after each challenge. And when the four challenges are complete, each contestant will have three minutes to present a flight of whiskeys that they have personally curated to our guest judges. These presentations will really show us just what type of personalities these contestants have, how much they love whiskey, and therefore their presentations will be worth the largest amount of points. We are currently broadcasting this event live to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. I've got them both up on my phone right now. Look, that's me. Uh, and I can see your comments coming in, a ton of comments already, 59 people watching, Tell your friends and family if you all have a contestant here uh, that is uh, near and dear to you that you're showing your support. 
get everybody on, send in some words of love, and I will shout out the comments as we go through these challenges. And with that being said, I would like to introduce our contestants for this evening. We have 10 contestants tonight. That is the largest number that we have had uh, through any of these events so far. And I think of, of any that we will have. Uh, so as I call their name, they're gonna give everybody a little wave at home. And tonight we have Alessa Geboff, Alexander Wang, Brad Holling, Charles Wilkerson, Forrest Price, Henry Chen, Matthew Porter, Tanya Thompson, Evan Lingenfelder, and Timothy Battle. So that's actually, that's nine contestants tonight. Uh, did I, let's see, nine contestants. Hopefully I didn't leave anybody out. You guys scream at me if I left somebody out. No, we're good. Okay, awesome. For some reason, I was thinking 10 all night. So we've got nine contestants tonight. Guys, best of luck to all of you. I can't wait to see who ten. comes out ahead. 10. We do have 10. Uh, Nick, who, who am I missing? I can't leave out the 10th person. No, I didn't leave anybody out. Maybe I'm just, oh, I've got two number ones. It's fine. We've, we've got 10 contestants. All right, guys, I swear I haven't had anything to drink yet. <laughs> But we've got 10 contestants. They're excited. They're ready. We have four challenges for them to, to get through before they present their flights. And with that being said, contestants, go ahead and grab challenge number one bottle from your kits that we provided and give yourself a little pour. Uh, but don't touch that glass just yet. We're going to let those whiskeys breathe while I tell you what you are going to be trying to figure out in challenge number one. So challenge number one is called high or low. With this challenge, each contestant must determine if the mystery whiskey is either higher or lower than 100 proof. One point will be given for the correct answer, either high or low. And a bonus point will be awarded if the contestant can guess the exact proof within two points. So for example, if the said whiskey is 110 proof, then any answer between 108 and 112 will be given that bonus point. Therefore, this round is worth two potential points. We are going to give you all two minutes to taste, evaluate, and submit your answers. Any answer submitted after the timer goes out will not be eligible for any points. So you are going to see a timer up on screen. I will also give you a verbal warning when there are about 20 to 30 seconds left to let you know that it is a good time to get your answers in. So to my 10 contestants tonight, uh, can I get a thumbs up that we are all good, ready to go, got the whiskeys ready? I have a quick awesome. Question. So this oh. cannot be at exactly 100 proof. It's either below or above 100. Is that correct? That is correct. It is not a trick question. I wouldn't be that mean to you. So it is 100% below 100 proof or higher than 100 proof. Will not be 100 proof exactly, but that is a very good question. Anybody else got a question before we get started? Okay. Well, I think that makes us clear. Nick, if you want to bring up the timer and we'll get started on my countdown. All right, so contestants in three, two, one, begin challenge one. Best of luck to you all with this very first one. And while these contestants are tasting away, smelling, and trying to decide what the proof is on this mystery whiskey that we gave them, I wanna tell everybody that may be watching from home that hasn't seen any of our past events exactly what the winner tonight is going to compete for at our finals when they make it here to our distillery. So these contestants are competing to, to move here and should they become the world's top whiskey taster, they are going to win some incredible prizes. They're going to get $20,000 in cash, a scholarship to Moonshine University to become an executive bourbon steward, and the opportunity to come here and blend their own unique bourbon with our master distiller, Steve Malley. But we're not gonna stop there. We're also going to send the world's top whiskey taster 
to some of the top whiskey festivals in the country to represent Bardstown Bourbon Company as an ambassador. So obviously anybody can hear that $20,000 cash prize and, and say, that's it, I love whiskey, I'm gonna start studying. But truly the other prizes, the executive bourbon stewardship from Moonshine University are incredible and experiences that stick with you for life. As somebody who's been very blessed to have had not the $20,000, but everything else, um, really exciting stuff that these guys are competing for. So best of luck to everybody here. Uh, the timer is getting close to that 30 second mark. So if you guys haven't yet, we're at 20 seconds right now. Uh, go ahead and submit your answers. Our scorekeeper is, is taking those answers behind the, scene, behind the scenes uh, through our Zoom chat, which is how we're broadcasting everything tonight. And in five, four, three, two, one, and zero. All right, so hopefully you guys have your answers in. Any answers after that timer will not count for points. So while Laurel Altman, our, our wonderful marketing director, is, is taking in those answers, updating our, our scoreboard to reveal live here in a few short moments, I would like to introduce our first guest judge to everybody tonight. And we have the wonderful master distiller for Bardstown Bourbon Company, Steve Nally. So Steve, if you don't mind coming on screen and unmuting yourself and just telling everybody what you're looking forward to tonight in these flight presentations. Thanks for being with us. Hey, thanks, Sam. Uh, first of all, you know, this is a wonderful group. We've got 10, you know, the largest group I think we've had so far. Um, I'm very excited, uh, you know, to have everybody here. Uh, it's wonderful to have this, this kind of enthusiasm and uh, everybody looks really, really upbeat about it. And, you know, as Sam said earlier, the $20,000 sounds great, but if you get the chance to come to the distillery and experience, you know, some time with not just me, but the whole group at the distillery and, and go around and experience some of the events, go to Moonshine University, you know, the $20,000 is just gonna be, you know, just a drop in the bucket. So if you get a chance, you know, I hope you make it, come to the distillery and we'll have a great time. So you know, keep, keep the enthusiasm up and good luck to everybody. Awesome, thanks Steve. And that's right, Steve, uh, you know, one of those prizes here is, is to blend a unique bourbon. Uh, and I did highlight Steve when I was talking about it, but we have a, a very large blending team here that consists of our, our cocktail professionals, our culinary professionals, and Steve and the other guys in the distillery. A really awesome experience uh, that I can't wait to see if it is in fact going to be a, a mid-Atlantic representative that wins that grand prize. So with that being said, uh, the scores are in. And before we show you guys how you did after challenge one, I would like to reveal to you what the mystery whiskey is that we gave you in challenge number one. So challenge number one, you're trying to determine if the proof is higher or lower than 100 proof and give us your best guess at what the exact proof is. And the mystery whiskey is in fact, straight from Kentucky, Woodford Reserve, which is a 90 proof. So the first correct answer would have been low. And if you guessed anything between 88 and 92, then you got both points for the round, giving you a, a pretty good start in these challenges. So Nick, let's see how we're doing after challenge one. All right, so we have, man, it was kind of all or nothing and split everybody down the middle here. So it looks like four people got both points and the rest of you didn't get any. So it was kind of, uh, you know, no splitting hairs there. Nobody with just one point. Um, so good job to the four of you that got both answers correct on round one. Tough break for those of you that did not, but it is only challenge one. We have plenty of more challenges to get through and loads more points. Two points is certainly, uh, as, as recent competi competitions have shown, not really uh, made or break too many of these wins here. So don't get discouraged just yet. We have a lot more opportunity to come. And with that said, let's grab challenge bottle number two and give ourselves a little pour of that. 
while I go over the rules. So keep those whiskeys firmly right there on your table until my countdown. Uh, we're gonna let them breathe while I tell you what we're doing with challenge number two. So challenge number two is going to be called a young or old. In this challenge, each contestant must determine the age of the whiskey. So the whiskey will either be younger than four years old or older than eight years old. So once again, it's not going to be anywhere in between four and eight years old. We're not that mean, we would not do that to you. Uh, trying to give you a little bit of contrast to make this, while it's still a very difficult challenge, uh, somewhat um, you know, possible to achieve. So it's either going to be younger than four or older than eight. You're going to get one point if you can guess either young or old. And then you can get a bonus point if you can guess the age within a year. So if it is a two-year-old bourbon and you guess anything between one and three years old, you're going to get both potential points on challenge number two, which makes this once again worth two potential points. And we are going to give you the same amount of time, two minutes on screen, and I will give you a verbal warning when you have about 20 to 30 seconds left to get your answers in. Can I get a thumbs up from all of my contestants that we understand the whiskeys are poured, we're ready to go? Okay, awesome. So Nick, if you wanna go ahead and pull up the timer on screen. On my countdown, you guys may begin challenge two. In three, two, one, start challenge two, y'all. And best of luck to you, hopefully, uh, those of you that weren't able to grab some points on challenge number one can feel a little bit more confident about challenge number two, trying to guess the age. And in the meantime, there are so many people watching right now, 93 people watching just on Facebook, and tons of comments are coming in. So I'd like to share with the contestants uh, what some people are saying. Uh, so it looks like Jennifer Perkins said, way to go, Tanya Lee Thompson on the scoreboard. Uh, let's see. Andy Edwards is also rooting for Tanya. And you're getting a ton of love, as well as Blaine and Costia and Paul. Man, contestants, if you've got some friends in, you better tell them to, to start spamming these comments because everybody is going for Tanya and I am scrolling. Uh, let's see. Alex uh, says, way to go, Matt. And we've got some more people for Matt here. Some people are just saying hello. A Summers just says hello to Barbara. So that's great that you guys are talking to each other. Um, and Julie Like said, Matt, be the whiskey star. You always are. She even made it rhyme. That is so awesome. Uh, let's see. A Summers says she's watching with Greg in Atlanta. So hi, Ace and Greg. Thanks for watching. And let's see, Naheem possibly said, hey, Wilkerson, Colonel Sanders called. He wants his eight secret herbs and spices back and his everything back. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but hopefully you enjoyed that message. And contestants, we are getting down there on the last few seconds on the board. That's 10 seconds left to get your answers in. Hopefully we see a lot more points on the board after challenge two. And three, two, one. Zero. All right. So whiskeys are down. Hopefully all of your answers are in. Hopefully we're feeling pretty confident after challenge number two. While we have 10 contestants and it's going to take us a short minute to get all of those answers and update the scoreboard for you all to see here shortly. I want to introduce to you our second guest judge of the night making his first appearance on World's Top Whiskey Taster. We have Herb Henneman our Vice President of Sales and Marketing. Herb, thanks for joining us tonight. Can you tell us what you're looking forward to seeing in these presentations later? Yeah, thanks, Sam. And uh, thanks to all of you guys for coming out. I, I guess I'm just looking forward most to see some of these guys' colorful personalities come to life. I mean, it was so cool to have uh, Brad. I, I met uh, the other day at, at the uh, distillery with his wife, Jessica. So Brad, can't wait to see your presentation. Tanya, I watch you talk a lot of smack on Instagram and I love the post right before this competition, getting yourself and the others fired up. That's great. 
Tim, Nick says great things. Matt, I just loved your video. I can't wait to see if that's as charismatic as you're tasting. And uh, I don't know where Forrest's calling in from, but I kind of want to enjoy a glass of bourbon in that room because it looks like a beautiful sunset over the water. So uh, stoked to be here. You guys are the best. And I can't wait to see your, everybody's presentations. Uh, thank you so much, Herb. I can't wait to hear your feedback after everybody gets a chance to present. Uh, we'll check in with you in a little bit here when we're ready for those. And in the meantime, I've just received word that the scores are ready. So before we reveal scores, let's tell all the contestants what the mystery whiskey was for challenge number two. And in challenge number two, you're trying to guess the age, whether younger than four years old, higher than eight years old, and if you can, the exact age. And the mystery whiskey is a 10-year bourbon from Russell's. So this is a, a wild turkey spirit, delicious if you've never tried it. It is 10 years old. So if you guessed old, you got one point. And if you guessed anything between nine and 11, then you got both points for the round. So Nick, let's bring up the scoreboard after challenge number two and see if we've got some more people on the board now. All right, we got a lot more people on the board and that's good. And we have three people tied for first place. We've got Brad, Matt, and Tanya. So it looks like everything she was saying on Instagram, she's, she's backing it up so far. Um, we'll see how she does with the next couple challenges. And great job to everybody that got those answers correct. Uh, if you're still trailing oh, a little bit Sorry to behind. interrupt. Yeah. Um, Laurel, I, my answer, I... Okay, we're gonna figure that out behind the scenes and maybe we'll have to update the scoreboard after this round. Uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead and move right in to challenge number three. So if you want to go ahead and grab your challenge number three bottle and give yourself a little pour, let that breathe for a while. We'll let Laurel uh, dig into those, those answers from the last round, make sure everybody is cleared there and I'll give an update once we figure that all out. Uh, so while we're letting those whiskeys breathe for challenge number three, uh, let's explain the rules. So challenge number three is called which whiskey? In this challenge, you must determine what type of whiskey you have in your glass. And we're going to give you a multiple choice here, although a very uh, hard and, and difficult challenge all the same. The whiskey is either going to be a bourbon whiskey, a rye whiskey, a scotch whiskey, or an Irish whiskey. So some subtle differences in there between bourbon and rye and, and even more so between scotch and Irish. We understand that this is tough. You do have the opportunity to gain an additional bonus of five points if you can guess the exact label of that said whiskey. So for example, if the whiskey is in fact a scotch and you guess Johnny Walker and it is in fact a Johnny Walker scotch, then you're going to walk away with six points. So we're starting to see some, some more difficult challenges and more reward if you get this challenge right, which would give you an incredible lead or help you come back if you've yet to get some big points on the board yet. We are going to time you all again with two minutes on the clock. Can I get a thumbs up from everybody on screen that we are good and ready to go? Awesome. I see everybody there. So Nick, go ahead and bring up that two minute timer. On my countdown, we can start challenge number three. There it is. So in three, two, one, zero. Awesome. So this has proved to be a pretty difficult challenge. Uh, as we've seen, we've done eight competitions so far. This is our ninth. Of those eight that we have had, we had one person in Florida uh, that was able to get all available points for this round. That was the first one uh, through about five competitions. And then in California, where we had, I think, eight or nine, but we all know I can't count now, um, people that were competing. <laughs> and I want to say about like more than half, at least, of the California people were able to get the brand and the whiskey type. So I know it can be done. We have done this internally through BBC employees for research purposes, of course. 
and it is hard, but it is obtainable if you, if you know your whiskeys. So I am excited to see if anybody here can pin not only the whiskey type, but the whiskey label. And let's see if we've got any more comments coming in. Uh, let's see. Chandler is a rooting for Alessa. Said Alessa is going to show them how we do things. I love that. So proud. Uh, let's see. Tons of love for Tanya still. Toby Cummings is, is rooting for Charles. Uh, so Charles, you're getting some, some uh, love from some fans here on Facebook as well. Oh, and Nick's pulling up some comments on YouTube as well. It looks like a ton of people are just spamming the comments with Matt's name. Uh, that's wonderful. Matt, what'd you have to do to get that to happen? <laughs> and 20 seconds left on the clock. Uh, good time to get those answers in if you haven't already. Hopefully we're feeling like maybe we've got somebody with all of the potential points for this round. There's five seconds left, everybody. Three, two, one, and zero. So hopefully your, your whiskeys are down and, and hopefully your answers are in. Once again, eligible answers have to be in before that timer runs out. So while we are letting Laurel catch up with all of the answers and update that scoreboard, I want to introduce our final guest judge for, for tonight. Uh, this evening we have John Hargrove, who is our COO and a former master distiller of Barton 1792. He's very excited, I'm sure, to see these presentations tonight as well. John, thanks for joining everybody. Can you say hi and maybe tell everybody what you're looking forward to seeing in these presentations tonight? Yeah, thank you, Sam. Uh, first of all, congratulations, everybody who's on here. Great representation uh, of the Mid-Atlantic. Um, I have high hopes that somebody from this group is going to make it all the way. So it looks like the scores are reflecting that. What I'm looking for in the next uh, final round of the setup and presentation, one is originality. And then obviously somebody who's having fun and it shows, right? So best of luck to everybody and keep up the great work. This isn't hard stuff either. So we're still, still trying to get it right on a daily basis. And like Sam said, we have a whole team to help us out. So we just don't have one master blender. We have a whole sensory team. So we know how tough this is. That's why we designed it like this. So good luck and have a great night. Thanks, John. I'm really excited to see uh, and hear uh, your, your feedback after these contestants have a chance to present the whiskeys they chose for tonight. So um, I just, I wanna kind of expand on, on what John said, uh, you know, the, the blending part of Bardstown Bourbon Company's product being so inclusive is seriously what makes working here so fun and it's going to make an incredible experience for the world's top whiskey taster because if you're whiskey that you come up with, uh, the blend that you come up with is so incredible. It might just become a Bardstown Bourbon Company product. Uh, how amazing would that be? So just something to get excited for uh, to whoever wins tonight. And with that said, the scores are in. Before we reveal the scores, let's reveal the mystery whiskey. So challenge number three, it's a tough one. You had to determine what the whiskey type was. And then if you can, try and pin the label or brand of that whiskey type. So the whiskey is in challenge number three, Dewar's Scotch. So Scotch would have been your first correct answer. And if you guessed Dewar's, then you got six points for this challenge, which would be an incredible advantage going into the fourth challenge. So Nick, please pull up the scoreboard and let's see what those scores look like after challenge number three. Okay, it looks like we still got three people tied for first place, Brad, Matt, and Tanya. So she's still backing it up, girl. I'm still rooting for you. Um, we have one more challenge left to go. So if you are behind, uh, still big points on this challenge. And then once again, the largest amount of points are going to be given during these presentations. So even if you're not at the top, don't lose your enthusiasm. You could really, uh, really come out ahead if you show us what you got in these presentations. But before we get to that, we've got one more challenge. So contestants, go ahead and grab the last bottle 
in the challenge kit that we pr provided you all it should be labeled number four and give yourself a pour. Keep it firmly right there on your counter or table until I give you the countdown. And I am going to explain the rules. So challenge number four is called which finish. In this challenge, you are going to have to decide which whiskey is in your glass from the following Bardstown Bourbon Company collaboration releases. So we're giving you a multiple choice of three things here, giving you a, a good 33% chance. It's either going to be Goodwood Walnut Ale finish, the Copper and Kings Sherry finish, or the Copper and Kings Orange Curacao finish. So if you're watching or maybe a contestant here uh, that doesn't know what these are, let me explain it a little bit further. So a finished whiskey is when we take a bourbon, a bourbon and, and all of its, its rights and regulations, right? Um, maybe it's nine years old, maybe it's 12 years old. We take it out of that barrel that it's been resting in and we put it into a finishing barrel. So a used barrel that previously held a different spirit. With our releases, they're, they're indicated by their name. So it's either going to be a walnut ale finish, a sherry finish, or an orange curacao finish. You couldn't get a, a more unique rainbow of, of beverages right there, right? So they're going to impart some very unique flavors, smells, characteristics uh, that are very specific to what that previous spirit was in that finishing barrel. So even if you've never had the chance to taste some of these, you can use what you know about those spirits to determine which finish is in your glass. We're going to give you two minutes once again. And in this round, it is all or nothing five points. So this is typically where we see some people with uh, high scores kind of fall behind and people with some lower scores come out ahead. So I'm excited to see how you all do after this round. Can I get a thumbs up from everybody here that we all know and understand what the challenge is? Okay, great. Nick, let's bring the timer on screen and we'll count it down for these contestants to begin. All right, challenge number four, everybody, in three, two, one, begin. Best of luck. While that is going on, I, I want to tell you guys about uh, this, this beautiful Rick House uh, that I am standing. And if you didn't know that it is a Rick House, this is actually a Rick House, not a virtual background. Uh, you can see all these barrels aging behind me. This Specific Rick House holds about 24,000 of these barrels. And then we've got some bigger ones that hold 58,000. So a lot of bourbon coming in the future from Bardstown Bourbon Company. But that's not all this Rick House has. It has this beautiful room that I'm in, which we call Pete's Place. It has a gorgeous bar that you can't see because that's where my monitor and my camera is standing on top of. But we do host some really cool experiences in here. We do a cocktail class where you can learn how to make two different cocktails right on top of this bar top from our uh, wonderful bartenders and, and occasionally myself when I'm around for the weekend. Uh, we do some, our, our, our run of the mill general tour actually goes into this room that's right behind me. You can see part of this Rick House has kind of been carved out and you see all those barrels on the floor right there. Uh, so if you sign up for our general tour, which is $10, you can end the tour by feeding some whiskey straight from the barrel, which is an incredible experience that everybody must have, every whiskey lover must have in their lifetime. So if you are coming to the Kentucky area or looking for something to do, uh, please go to our website, bardstownbourbon.com and book an experience. You will walk away with uh, such a wonderful memory of Bardstown, Kentucky the bourbon capital of the world. So guys, 13 seconds left to get those answers in. If I put a partial answer, is that all right? I hope so, yeah. Oh, you mean if you just like said Sherry instead of like Copper and King Sherry, is that what you mean? Yeah, we'll, we'll allow, as long as it's very clear, uh, you'll get the points. We understand the need to get the answers in quickly. So we won't, uh, we won't jip you with, with a cheap one like that. Uh, with that said, uh, timer's out. Hopefully your answers are in. And before we get to the bottle reveal and the scoreboard reveal, 
I'd like to check in with uh, a couple of our, our lead scorers, if, if they don't mind coming on and talk to me for a second. I'm, I'm just going to start with uh, Tanya because she kind of got called out by Herb uh, for being uh, super confident on Instagram, and she still got the lead so far uh, with Brad and, and someone else here. So Tanya, how, how are you feeling being uh, up there on, on the scoreboard and how do you feel about all these challenges in general? What's been the hardest for you? What's been the easiest? Hi, Sam. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you great. Thank you. This is Tanya. This is actually a lot more difficult than it looks and it's, it's really nerve wracking under a time count. So <laughs> um, probably my most difficult challenge is anything to do with scotch. I'm just not a scotch drinker. So I didn't mm -hmm. really start drinking a lot of scotch until about six weeks ago, just to, in preparation <laughs> for this. So, yeah. Okay. And, yeah. and what did, uh, what else were you doing to prepare for this event? Like what does, what does practicing look like? Do you have a friend or a partner that's, that's blinding you on anything or yeah. what's yes. that like? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. My life partner, my boyfriend, Andy, he's been testing me with blind tastings for about probably four weeks every night. So lots of practicing with little small shots, you know, so uh, yeah, my liver is ready for a little bit of a break. <laughs> I can imagine. Well, hopefully it, um, you know, it proves worth it for you in the end. Uh, I'm excited to see how you do after challenge four and what whiskeys you're getting ready to present here shortly. Uh, I want to take it to uh, Brad, who's also tied with you in the lead and, and is a good friend of everybody here at, Bra at Bardstown Bourbon Company. As, as Herb said, I think he was just in the distillery this past weekend. So, so Brad, same question to you. Uh, what, what do you think of the challenges so far? What has given you the most difficulty? I will tell you that uh, for me, really the hardest ones, this one because the only one of those that I've ever tasted was the, the uh, sherry uh, cast. So uh, I'm guessing because there was no citrus, I, I was kind of making decisions based off of palate only and not because of any kind of experience. So it made it a little more difficult not have actually ever tasting two of the products. I can imagine. I can imagine. So I'm, I'm, I'm wishing you all of the best luck. And uh, I think the third person that we have in the lead, I believe, is Alessa. So Alessa, nope, not Alessa. Um, it was Matt. It was Matt. I'm sorry. I'm going solely off of memory right now. Um, so Matt Porter, uh, you're getting one, you're getting tons of comments on YouTube right here. What did you do to get all these people to just spam YouTube comments? with your name? I handed out $20,000 worth of IOUs to everybody <laughs> on the internet. And I'm hoping I can fulfill those. So help me out. If not, we have a problem. And I'm going to start selling some stuff. Okay. Okay. I was wondering. And uh, that's great. I'm wishing you all the best of luck. How do you feel so far about the challenges? And <laughs> Nick's sharing some of the comments right now. Uh, how do you feel uh, you did with this last one? I feel pretty confident. Um, I've had so many people just helping me out, sending me stuff, sending me different different finishes, different things. So was, I knew kind of what to look for and kind of what um, what the whiskey was either what it had or what it was missing. So uh, right. I kind of just determined from that. And I think I, I think I nailed it so hard. I, think I nailed it good. <laughs> Do you think as you're going through these uh, challenges, do you go with your first intuition always, or do you let yourself kind of think about it and, and go with your, your kind of final thought or, or what's the thought process there? It, for me, it really depends on um, if it's like my, my first sip of the night, for example, the, the first pour that Woodford reserve tastes a little bit hot to me. And I was like, Ooh, and then this, I had to go back in for a second sip. And then it kind of tamed itself down and I could kind of rule out the above 100 proof. So it, it really depends. But um, I like the third, fourth and fifth guess myself way too much. So I try to stick with my first or second guess. I've been seeing that as a trend a lot with uh, the contestants throughout all of these uh, competitions is that second guessing is really where they, um, you know, wish, wish they hadn't, you know, kind of where they messed up. So uh, it's just interesting to hear that from, from you guys as we go through these competitions. Thank you uh, for giving me some feedback. 
Uh, and before we reveal the scores after all of our tasting challenges, I wanna reveal the final bottle, which you have to decide what finish was in your glass from those three options. And the correct answer is the Goodwood Walnut Ale. So kind of a tough one. I'm seeing some heads hung. I am seeing actually a lot more heads hung than I'm seeing a uh, fist in the air in, in celebration. So interested to see how the scores reflect. Nick, let's bring up the scoreboard and see how everybody did after this tough challenge, it looks like. Okay, well, we've got two now clearly in the lead instead of three, and that is Brad and Matt. Um, surprisingly, uh, that, that puts Alessa in third place. I guess I'm a psychic. Uh, but guys, we've got our flight presentations left, and there are a lot of points to dole out for these flight presentations. So bring all that energy, bring all that you got. Uh, we are going to start with our highest score. Before we do that, before we do that, in case our viewers watching on Facebook and YouTube don't know what you guys are about to do, uh, let me explain a little bit what we asked of the contestants. So when Bardstown Bourbon Company sent out these challenge kits, as they have gone through these mystery whiskeys, that was one thing that we sent them. We also sent them a little bit of homework. So we asked them to put together a flight of whiskeys uh, to present to our guest judges, and I suppose to you all at home as well, uh, and to you know put a lot of thought into it. So we we told them we would give them five points on their presentation skills, kind of looking at their enthusiasm and, and their love for whiskey. Uh, do they present in a way that makes you want to taste this flight, right? And, and listen to them talk about these whiskeys. Also five points for their thoughtfulness. So what are we comparing with these three whiskeys? Are we going to walk away from this flight of whiskey? Should we be drinking it? Uh, with the knowledge that we didn't have before. So those are the types of questions that the judges are going to be asking themselves. They are going to be giving their scores anonymously. You will not see them in any kind of order uh, of, of how I presented them reflected on the scoreboard. Uh, but we will post those scores after everybody has given a chance to present their flights. And those final scores will tell us who our regional champion that is moving on to the finals to become the world's top whiskey taster is. So I hope everybody is ready. Uh, I'm actually going to start with Brad, I think. Uh, Brad, you have some bottles ready. It looks like he's, he's pulling them out right now. So we are going to give every contestant three minutes to present. Uh, Nick is going to pull up that timer. He's gonna start the timer when you begin talking. And then he's going to bring that timer back up when there are two minutes left, when there is one minute left, and then once again, when there are 10 seconds left. Uh, we are going to mute you as soon as that timer hits zero. So please pay attention to the screen and, and try to pace yourself so that you can get everything in that you've prepared during your presentation. So Brad, I'm really excited to see what you got. When you are ready, you can take it away and we will start that timer. Best of luck to you. Yeah, that's okay. Just go ahead and unmute yourself there if you can. There we go. Go ahead, Brad. Uh, thank you, Sam. My name's Brad Holling. I'm a retired veteran. And uh, just uh, this month, I've been posting on Instagram some of my uh, past history uh, that led up to the Battle of Mogadishu, often known as Black Hawk Down. And in doing that, I've reflected on my life's experience. Uh, to me, the whiskey is about experience and memories. And, uh, and as a result, I've, uh, I've made a flight that has got some of my most prominent memories uh, along my whiskey journey. This flight, I'm calling it my life flight. First in my life flight pertaining to whiskey is going to be Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels in 1980, I was 18, and I was living in the barracks, and uh, Jack Daniels was prominent. Everybody uh, drank Jack and Coke. If you weren't drinking Jack and Coke, it meant that you were drinking it straight. You were doing uh, shots. So uh, it was fun for me to come back to this. I came back to it and I was pleasantly surprised testing it for this competition. Uh, on the nose, I was finding 
really nice uh, notes of vanilla. There's some caramel, there's banana. And then on the palate, I get a uh, really balanced vanilla, again, with some, uh, some of the uh, oak and a little bit of char. This is a very short finish. Uh, however, it's probably more complex than I knew at, at age 18. Second on my life flight is Maker's Mark. Why? Because it's the first whiskey I ever drank neat. Who would have thought whiskey without Coke uh, or a format other than a shot? So I really like this. I still go back to it today. It's a great whiskey. On the nose, you're going to find strong caramel, uh, really good caramel. And on the palate, we get nice toffee. We get uh, some light nut. We get some oak and I get a little bit of wheat. This has a medium finish, uh, but good for the beginner. The last one is going to be uh, this Orphan Barrel uh, Rhetoric 25. I got this for the 25th anniversary of the Battle of Mogadishu to celebrate with my mates and to remember our 19 fallen from that battle. This is uh, aged the same year as the battle, 1993. And uh, so it's, it's going to be strong on the nose. We get tobacco, we get leather, uh, and we get what I call attic dust. But on the on the uh, palate, I get something sweet. I get uh, some uh, cinnamon, uh, a little bit of uh, warm spice, and it finishes medium. Uh, everybody's uh, flight is everybody's experience is different, uh, different than mine. But I encourage everybody to test their life's flight. Cheers to your memories. Cheers to your flight. Brad, cheers. Thank you so much. And, and, and thank you for your service. And, and what a wonderful presentation. What a strong message and, and concept you. to do for your flight. I, I really appreciate that. And I really, I, I think a lot of people can relate to, to the selections that you made, at least with the first two. Jack and Coke was definitely how I started drinking whiskey. No shame there. I was probably 18 myself as well. And when I first started bartending, Maker's Mark was hand, like with, with no question the first uh, whiskey that I started drinking neat as well. So I think, uh, I think you, you really are, are familiar to a lot of people in that sense. And I, and I can't wait to see how your scores reflect. So best of luck to you, Brad. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Cheers. With that, we're going to move right along. We got nine more people. See how good I'm doing at counting now, guys. We got nine more people to get through tonight. Uh, we're going to take it over to Matt next. Matt, really excited about your presentation, <laughs> bud. Uh, we are going to put three minutes on the screen. Same deal as Brad. We'll show you when there's two, when there's one, and when there's 10 seconds. So I'm going to ask Nick to bring that timer up now. And there it is. Matt, take it away whenever you're ready. Thank you, Sam. The name of my flight is Trickery to Transparency. And my first pour comes out of this bottle, Merica Bourbon Whiskey. It's red, it's white, it's blue. It screams liberty, it screams freedom, it screams Merica, it screams buy me. But unfortunately, the one thing it doesn't scream is that it's only aged for six months in new oak barrels. You're not gonna find that out until you get home and pour it in a glass. That is my first pour. And the, on the nose and on the palate, you're gonna get uh, fresh shucked corn and grass stained new Reebok shoes. And uh, these, these bourbons, uh, this bourbon is gonna, is gonna have that, that smell just kind of vaporizing a little bit. It's not the most pleasant thing, but it's important for a young whiskey to know what that tastes like. It's not the best bourbon you'll ever taste, but on the label, it says the best bourbon you'll ever taste. Moving up the transparency ladder, early times bottled and bond. This is an orange citrus bomb with crumb cake, banana bread. It's fantastic. A wonderful, wonderful bourbon whiskey. And the stamp bottled and bond is proof that what's in this bottle is aged at least four years and is bottled at 100 proof. A consumer can rely on this stamp knowing that what's in this bottle is not um, just a taste and a smell of what bourbon is made out of, but what bourbon turns into, a melding of some of the most fantastic ingredients on the planet. 
early times bottled and bond. And my third and final pour of the evening for this flight is Sam Houston 14 year. Just like the Bardstown Bourbon Company, the folks who make this Sam Houston 14 year know a thing or two about transparency. On their label, they're putting everything a person needs to know. The mash bill, the exact age, how many barrels are in the batch. This is transparency 101. The only thing it doesn't tell you is how well this pairs with a Monte Cristo sandwich, to be honest. Now, you put your nose in a glass and then you take a taste. You're gonna ask yourself this. You're gonna say, did a cherry tree and an oak tree have a baby? And then that baby grew up and matured into a super mature oak cherry tree? And did it grow red, red licorice from its, from its branches? And then did it, did it sweat out a peppery caramel from its, from its tree pores? And then did it catch on fire? And the firefighters had to come with a gigantic bourbon fire hose and put this tree out. And then they caught the runoff inside of, inside of some sort of receptacle and then bottled it into this super sexy son of a beast, San Houston 14 year, honestly, one of the best bourbon whiskeys you will ever taste. Nailed it. And with zero seconds to spare, Matt, you did not waste a single second. And that was beautiful. You should be writing bourbon poetry. I, 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 could, I could not be happier with, with how, I, how much you just showed up for that presentation. Uh, certainly didn't uh, fall short of any of my expectations. So kudos to you. I'm going to move on quickly because we have a lot more contestants to go through. Uh, up next is Alessa. So Alessa tough act to follow, but I got faith in you, girl. I know you're going to show up and show us what you got. So we are going to do the same thing as before. We're going to pull the timer up on screen, start it when you begin and show you when you've got two minutes left, when you have one minute left and when you have 10 seconds. So there is the timer. Take a breath if you need to. Uh, no shame in doing that and start when you are ready. Good luck. All right. Thanks, Sam. So for me, the most intriguing thing about Kentucky bourbon specifically is the magical rickhouse because the fluctuations within the rickhouse affects the way the juice reacts with the barrel and makes Kentucky bourbon so So I went to a distillery, tasted the bourbon straight out of a few barrels side by side and picked your favorite. I haven't. So this is my way of recreating that experience. Ultimately, it is a flight of the same bourbon, except it's not the bourbon equivalent of separating triplets at birth. The DNA is exactly the same, but they've completely different environments. And when they've matured to a certain point, you bring them back together. They much look the same, but there are going to be differences. Some people is a haircut, but others may be quite profound. So it's the age old question of nature versus nurture. And how do you study that in a bourbon? Well, in a scientific experiment, you wanna keep as many variables as consistent as possible. So if you look at one producer with a single recipe, you're feasibly using the same grains from the same farms, the same water source, yeast, mash bill, distillation process, and even the same cooperage. Theoretically, the only difference is where that barrel spent its life within the rickhouse. So I've chosen four roses, single barrel, for this, because like Bardstown Bourbon Company, they're very transparent. And there's this lovely little code on the bottom of every bottle, which helps you pinpoint your barrel location. It tells you the warehouse number inside, the rick number, the tier or level of that rick, and the barrel position with gear. Now the mash bill for this bourbon contains 35% rye. The higher rye content gives it a nice spicy note. It's been aged around seven or eight years. So there'll be some traditional vanilla and caramel flavors from the wood, but it hasn't been aged so long that you lose the fruity character that comes from this particular yeast strain. But how does location put into it? Well, theoretically, you can find bottles from three barrels stored in different parts of the same rickhouse. One really high against the outer wall where it's bound to be super hot in the summer. One really low in the center, which is the coolest area because it's been insulated by all of those other barrels. And then somewhere kind of on a middle tier in between the two. So I asked some friends all around the country to send me pictures of the bottles in their area. I took their coats together that flight. So this little triplet ended up in Texas. It's our warm climate barrel. This is our moderate climate barrel all the way out in Colorado. And I found this one right down the street in Durham, North Carolina. It's our cool climate barrel. So with some patience, coordination, and a 
whole lot of shipping fees, you could feasibly get three barrels in front of you side by side and taste the difference that the magical Rick House makes on your Kentucky bourbon. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Alessa. That was so wonderful. I, I, I love the uniqueness in this approach. It, it's something that we haven't seen from any contestant in any competition so far. So I think that is going to speak volumes. You're also clearly, and I hope you take no offense to this, a whiskey geek. You know your stuff, girl. And that's what this is all about. I love, I love hosting this because I love meeting all of these like-minded whiskey geeks and you did incredible. So uh, mm -hmm. cheers to you. Very good job on your presentation. I'm excited to see how you do at the end here. So with that said, let's move along to our next presenter. Miss Tanya. So Tanya, we're going to move it along to you. And I'm not going to repeat it. Uh, you know how the timer works, right? We're going to pull it up, start it when you're ready. So Nick, if you want to get that on screen, Tanya, go ahead and show us what you got whenever you are ready. When challenged to present the ultimate flight, I thought about my bourbon journey and the memories tied to special bottles shared with those I love. So what I'm presenting to you this evening is a complete Kentucky bourbon flight that represents bourbon as stages of life. From when we were first introduced to bourbon to the bourbon you have to try before you die. I'm calling it life's journey. So first stop is Maker's Mark, a great entry level bourbon. It's excellent neat mixed with ice or water and it's obviously a great mixer in any cocktail. The flavor profile is a candy store at Christmas. The nose is warm caramels, and you can just smell the cakes baking in the back. The palate is buttery caramel, heavy on the vanilla, with just the right amount of orange zest on the medium finish. At 90 proof, it's mild and sweet, and it's the key ingredient in the award-winning bourbon balls I make every Christmas. As we gain in age and experience, we want to explore more of what bourbon has to offer in smaller, more unique batches. So we're gonna leave the candy store and we're gonna head over to the flower shop on the corner. And I present to you Four Roses Single Barrel. The nose is a perfectly balanced floral bouquet, which leads to a robust fruit flavor explosion on the palate. So think fresh August peaches warmed by the sun and apricot stewed with honey and brown sugar. I mean, doesn't that just sound delicious? All of this balances out on the long finish with oak and toasted nuts. This 100 proof creation by Jim Rutledge wins out in most of my blind tastings, including um, against some really nice unicorn bottles. After many decades of bourbon experimentation, we reach an age where anything older than our favorite pair of loafers is a welcome surprise. I think you can feel me. Our history is rich, our memories are many, and our friendships are deep. So we're gonna leave the flower shop and come over with me to the old library. So picture oak paneled walls and comfy leather chairs. I present to you Elijah Craig single barrel aged 23 years. From Heaven Hill Distillery, this 90 proof bourbon lends itself to heavy wood notes and grains on the nose and dried cherries and vanilla on the palate. The finish is long and coated in honey and leather notes and just two drops of water transforms this into the land of fruit and honey. So balanced and rich. If this is the last bourbon I taste before I die, I'd be okay with that. Really anything older than 20 years. So it's the final stop on our life's journey flight. Thank you for sharing this flight with me. My advice to you is to always drink the best bourbon you can find and afford, share it with your friends. And remember, there's no time like the present. Cheers. Cheers, Tanya. That was beautiful. And what a great message to send in 2020 with the year that we're having. You know, I meet so many whiskey collectors and, and bourbon collectors that never open those bottles. Open them. Look at this. <laughs> open them. Open them. Share them with your friends. You did so wonderful. I feel like the way you described those bourbons, I was like, uh, listening to a cooking show where I'm all of a sudden inspired to start cooking something I am not equipped to try. Um, so great job to you, Tanya. You, you've done wonderful. Uh, I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. And we are going to move right along into our next contestant, which is Forrest Price. Forrest, super excited to see what you got. This is a beautiful room that you're standing in. 
Uh, we are going to pull that timer up for you, just like the past contestants. And whenever you are ready, you may tell us about the flight that you have. Okay, so the flight I have put together for you all tonight is serves to show how you can progress through different styles of whiskey. Uh, one of the things I hear quite often from varying whiskey drinkers is like, you know, bourbon people don't like scotch and vice versa, uh, when really I believe they just haven't been exposed to the right brands yet. And so we're going to start with the bourbon, uh, and this one is 80 proof, which is legally the lowest whiskey can be. And Cabin Still Kentucky Bourbon was originally a Sitzel Weller release, but is currently uh, under the Heaven Hill arm. And I personally believe this is one of the best dollar for dollar whiskeys available in the market uh, because it's between three and four years old, and you can oftentimes find it for $15 or less, which you know today makes it somewhat of a unicorn. And next, we're going to go into a rye whiskey, and this in particular is Michter's Rye, uh, which has an interesting history. Uh, it's been over 200 years in Pennsylvania before it finally closed uh, for a few years in 1989 and sold to the current owners um, who moved it to Louisville, Kentucky, where they currently operate two distilleries. And the reason I chose Michter's is because as far as rye whiskeys go, it definitely uh, leans more on the sweeter side of things. So it'll serve as a nice uh, go-between between the bourbon and single malts, which tend to lean sweet. And lastly, we are going to talk about scotch for a minute. And one of the main knocks you'll hear from, especially the American palate about scotch is, oh, it's peaty or overly smoky, um, or that scotch is smoky in general, when in fact, most scotches are not peaty. It's just a lot of the most famous ones are. And so what is peat exactly real fast? Peat is what, if you let it sit around for several thousand more years, would eventually become coal. It's very condensed organic matter that they literally set a light to dry the grains after the malting. And that's what imparts the smoky flavor into the whiskey. And um, this one in particular is a single malt from the Campbelltown region. And so there's five types of scotch. Uh, scotch, in, their single malt in particular, means 100% malted barley. Um, which means 100% malted barley, as well as being from a single distillery, if you hear the term single uh, malt. And the Campbelltown region is also the smallest of the five major regions of Scotland. It's a peninsula on the southwest side of, of Scotland. And in particular, is, is a peated scotch, but not overly peaty. It's going to have uh, some warmer qualities to it that you might expect, say, from a uh, rye whiskey, which is why it's a nice transition. It's also sweet. Because uh, it was aged in former bourbon and sherry casks. So it's going to have very familiar notes that a bourbon drinker might have, while the fruit helps kind of round the peat and the sweetness together. And another thing I love about this flight is none of them are overly powerful. So you can actually go back and forth in between them, comparing and contrasting. And uh, thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Forrest, uh, for that wonderful presentation. I feel like I have so much more knowledge now on, on the whiskeys that you presented and, and also a very bold move to kind of end with a, a scotch there to a cast of judges that love bourbon, but we love it. That's, that's what we're excited to see. We want to see the personality. You clearly know a ton about all three of these expressions and it was delightful to watch. So thank you so much for giving us your time. I can't wait to see how you do after everybody else presents. And with that said, we're gonna move right along to get to the rest of our presenters here. So up next, we have Evan Langenfelder. Evan, we're gonna take it over to you. We're gonna spotlight your video and bring up that timer to work the same way as the others have. So there's the screen for the timer. Evan, when you are ready, tell us about the flight that you have for us today. Well, fam, thank you so much. And it being, you know, Bardstown Bourbon Company, I had a feeling that people might lead towards that trend. So I thought, let's do rye. Um, I've always, I mean, actually, not always, but I was a bartender for quite some time. And I always kind of was raised upon this thing, rye is for mixing, bourbon's for sipping. And as I've come of age, I've learned that that's not necessarily always the case. So um, my flight I've arranged by not only the years that it's been aged, but the proof, the location, um, many things. So I'm starting off with this Sagamore Distillery, um, Penny's Proof. This is a two and a half year aged rye 
um, distilled in Baltimore. This is one of their products that was not actually um, co-distilled with MGP out in Indiana. This is actually all Maryland product. I really want to feature the hometown. Hey, Baltimore, what's up? But um, it's really wonderful. Two and a half years, you, it's quite young, but it really accents like the minty, the herbaceous the floral notes of a rye, especially the young rye. Um, light body, not too much sweetness, but a great ground to get your start on, especially at 83 proof. Um, moving on to the next one, moving to a typical rye that has been my go-to for a long time, and it's Templeton. Classic MGP. Um, we're going to up the rye percentage, 95% rye, a little bit of malted barley in there, but granted, mostly a rye product. Um, this guy has twice the amount of age. You can see it through the color. You can feel it in the taste. The, you can feel it in the mouth. The, the vanilla, the fruits start to come out. Um, it's a little bit more bold. Um, it has nice spike, spice characteristics and a decently long finish, but not too much. So it's great finishing just around about 90 proof. And then lastly, I wanted to finish off with a mixture product with barrel proof rye. Um, this guy, I actually did tons of research. Couldn't find the actual age statement, but I think it's about like eight to 10, just based on the color um, and the taste. Um, it's coming in at about 112. So start off at 83, wet your rust a little bit get into the tone, you know, get to learn what the rye whiskey starts to taste like. Then up at the 90, oh wait, there's some oak in there. And now you get to the 112 and this mash bill is actually um, going to be about 51, 52% rye and then a decent amount of corn. This is what you're gonna con consider like a Kentucky rye. Um, they call it Kentucky rye because it's similar to Kentucky bourbon with the uh, corn influence. That sweetness, the dark current, the tannins, the oak really, really make it a complex, dark, robust rye. It's, it's um, kind of, it's kind of what you'd expect leading towards the bourbon, like the robustness. But I mean, we're kind of going through the seasons here. Light rye, medium, dark, going from summer to winter. And I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Evan. Uh, that was delightful. I'm, I'm a huge rye fan and, and that third piece there, the Minkter's Rye is, is one of my all time favorites, uh, just whiskeys to drink in general that not a lot of people know about. I think that's actually twice I've seen them uh, in this competition uh, and, and haven't in, in the others. So I see some like minds here on the East Coast and in the Mid-Atlantic region. And that was wonderful. So thank you for your presentation. I wish you all the best of luck uh, when we see the scores here in a few short mo moments. We've got a couple more people to get through before we get to that. And next up is Henry Chen. So we are going to, oh, I'm sorry, I'm skipping somebody. Up next is Charles. Sorry, Charles. I didn't mean to do you like that. We got Charles up next. We're super excited to see what he's got ready for us. Charles, we're going to spotlight your video, give you three minutes to just like everybody else, show you when there's two, one, and then 10 seconds left. So let's pull that timer up, Nick, for Charles to see. And there it is. Charles, super excited to see what you have for us. Go ahead and take it away whenever you are ready. Okay, so um, you know a lot of things we hear about when you start your bourbon and, and the whiskey is, is about a journey. And so tonight, when I built this, when I thought about building this flight, it is truly about that journey. And I'm going to take you you on a hike. What I like to take you on a hike today. And so, and 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 during this hike, we're going to experience some special bottles that mean have a lot of meaning to me. So let's jump out of the truck and let's hit the trail, and off we go, right? And so, first thing up. We're going to go to our good old friend, Buffalo Trace. Buffalo Trace, we all know this brand. It's an iconic deal. Sweetness, the honey, the approachability of it. And what makes this one really so special, and I wanted to bring this one in, was this was my entry point in the bourbon in, in my journey, right? Many years ago, right? And so as we go on, on this trail and we can hike together down this, this hike, it's really about... Um, we can go together, but just like um, a hike and, and your journey, it's about a personal journey, right? It's a personal thing because why? Every palette is different. So here we go. We're trucking down the trail and off we go. And we just crossed the sign and it says, welcome to Alabama. 
And I know you just stopped dead in your tracks and said, Charles, we are dead lost right now. We're in Alabama. No, my friends, we're not. And we're going to, I'm going to bring in the Detling bourbon. What's so special here? Six grains, um, farm to bottle thing. And what's really exciting about this is when you bring this up and the nose that's on this, it, it, it's anticipation. It's like, you know, you're going to round that corner and something amazing is about to happen. And we get that and wow, yes, sensory overload, that first sip. But when it settles in, decadent chocolate, a graham cracker, toasted marshmallow. What, what? That's s'mores? Is that what I just said? Yes. You and I sitting beside a campfire, having a s'more, and that warmth of the fire is just warming the chest, right? And so really special about this bottle here is every single thing about that like even the wood was harvested from the farm on this one. So I'd love to stay and linger by the campfire with you, but we're running out of time and we got to get back, right? So here we go. We're trucking back and we are back at the truck and you and I are sitting on the tailgate under this beautiful shade tree. And I am going to bring out this last bottle and it's a Woodford rye. Um, it's, what is it about the Woodford rye? It is balanced. It is refreshing on the palate. And after a long hike, you're looking for something that's going to be refreshing for you, right? And so this one, special to me, this one was a birthday gift to me from my staff. So enjoyed the hike with you. Hope we do it again. Oh, and Charles, I'm so sorry we had to cut you off too soon, but you were doing so well. Um, I, I honestly, like you, you had me in, I was pulling the popcorn up. I was, I was listening to you. I feel like you painted this beautiful picture with these beautiful descriptions of whiskey. I almost feel you're, you're, you're on like some Bob Ross vibes. You're the, you're the Bob Ross of, of guiding whiskey tastings. That was that was amazing. Uh, so thank you so much for your presentation. It was beautiful. Uh, and I wish you all the best of luck. We have a few more to get through. Uh, so we are going to take it to Henry Chen uh, following this beautiful presentation. Henry, I am excited to see what you got. I see your bottles are out and ready. So we're going to pull up that timer and start it when you are ready, sir. Absolutely. And oh, oh, I'm sorry. He started too soon. Let's restart that. No <laughs> we don't want to. We don't want to spare any seconds. We don't want to cut any good. seconds away from you. So Henry, go ahead and start when you are ready. All right, sure, I'm ready. Anyone looking forward for dinner tonight? Well, I think I am. I bring to you Order 66. 66 percent with an emphasis on dessert, and 66 percent wheat bourbons. Well, I wanna start with this one. This is a reflection of my journey with bourbon, just like how a lot of you have already told your stories. I started off my bourbon trail, at least in the first trip at Four Roses. Something I always remember Four Roses for is that the Rick houses are all single, single levels. That distinguishes it from all the other distilleries all around. Well, why do I start with this one? This is gonna be your full Dinner. This is a very heavy dinner. You're talking about something along the lines of a Kentucky hot brown. Where do you start with a hot brown? Well, you start with a sip of four roses. You, first, you have the bacon, has a bit of saltiness. And then you add, you have the cheese. Well, the, the cheese adds another complexity level into the saltiness of the flavor. Now, what are you looking to get out of this? Well, something that's different between bourbon accompanying food and wine accompanying food is that bourbon amplifies all the flavors all around. So this, you get just enough spice and you get just enough sweetness and you accompany that with a rich salty flavor of a full hot brown. Delicious, right? All right, well, let's get to the desserts. Now, why did I choose this one? Because 46 was what brought me to wheat bourbons. Now, as you can see, the Derringer is also wheat bourbon. Why did I start with this one? Well, this is just the fine one to start with. This is floral. This just has enough caramel. And I wanted to describe my journey with being a cigar smoker myself, a cigar taster. This is a very good pairing with a Corojo wrap cigar. This is earthy, but you got the floralness. 
Well, it amplifies both sides. And finally, my favorite, the Derringer. The Derringer, I found this by accident because Rabbit Holes happened to be the last one in my five distillery tour during the second tour when I was in Louisville. And one thing this reminded me of was Finnish and Sherry, and is a weed of bourbon. Well, that kind of reminds me of McAllen, the very first scotch that I had. I would describe this as a full-blown creme brulee with, with a cherry on top. And I like to pair that with a Sumatra cigar. With a Sumatra cigar, you, you can get spice, you can get a lot of cinnamon. And since both flavors have cinnamon, you combine and you mash it and you have your dream. You have your dream of a 66% dessert. Above all, I want to totally recommend, if you're looking for a quality cigar, go for Rocky Patel. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Henry. Uh, that was such a delightful presentation. I think, uh, you know, I, I saw tons of your personality, your likes, your interests. You can kind of see your whiskey journey as, as much as any other contestant tonight. And, and all of them are so unique and, and so interesting to hear about. And I think very interesting to see your cigar pairing for, for the two that you have there. Uh, so, uh, you know, come out to Bardstown Bourbon Company. We sell cigars here. Uh, we'll, we'll have a cigar and a, and a bourbon on the patio sometime in the future. You did great. Good job, Henry. Thank you. And yes, of course, we've got Timothy Battle up next and then Alex Wang on deck. So we are going to take it over to Timothy. Timothy, I can't wait to see what you've got for us. We've got the timer up and ready to go. He's laughing. He's smiling. I feel like this is going to be a great presentation. So Timothy, take it away when you are ready. So I want to welcome everybody to the Mid-Atlantic and to Washington, D.C. From the end of Prohibition in 1933, rye whiskeys were in a steady decline. With 150,000 cases sold in the United States compared to 14.7 million cases of bourbon sold, it was the reemergence of cocktail culture in the United States. During the dawn of the new millennium, that spurred a volume of growth in rye whiskey. The 2019 finding distilleries generated $236 million of sale, sales from 1.21 million cases of rye sold, and rye is back. Even our native to Mid-Atlantic, George Washington, even distilled his own rye. I have a flight here of my favorite ryes that I end the night with because I've never end the night with bourbon. High West Rendezvous, pleasant and sweet, and we can taste these taste notes. Good with a taste of caramel, honey, vanilla, mingled together with a little nostril burn. The nose never lies. The elements det detected there are also present in the palate. Burnt sugar enters, in, enters your nose and sweetening sip, full flavor and complex. The second, Sazerac rye. Aromas of orange zest, clove, raisin, and it hits your sense with hits of rye spice and hints of anise. It's soft with a gentle delivery, allowing a deeper inhale of draw with a fainter sense. Fruit flavors comprised with sweet apricots, orange peels, plums, and more traditional notes of caramel and vanilla. The last one I have is the wild rye whiskey, the wild turkey reserve rye. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> uh, faint notes of ginger, gingerbread and hay work against the aromas heavier caramel and rye grain scents. I enjoyed, I enjoyed a display of classic rye notes and a present with a notable omission of cinnamon. It's rye grains and caramel and kettle corn notes reinvent the wheel, but they perform well together. It's most noteworthy trait is the veal creaminess of its Envelopes of palate together and lemon notes. That's our Rob flight. Thank you, Timothy. You did great. You did so great. Trust me, Timothy. 
I know how hard it is to speak in front of people. <laughs> That's why I put on the sequins and I distract people while I don't know how to count to 10. Uh, but you did awesome. You, you had uh, some incredible rise there. And I think a lot of people think all bourbon tastes the same, all rye tastes the same. And as you're describing the, the tasting notes on every single rye, you know, nothing sounded the same. You say burnt sugar and orange bomb, and then you move to uh, gingerbread and, and notes of hay, and you really grab an audience, audience and you did a great job. So I, I kudos to you for, for showing up and showing us what you like, what you got, what you're into. It's, it's great to know you as, as a whiskey lover. So thank you so much for your presentation. I wish you all the best of luck. And with that said, we've got one more presentation to go through and maybe we saved the best for last. I know he's got his bottles out. He's got his whiskeys ready and he is excited to show up for everybody. So Alex, we're going to pull that timer on screen. I am ready to see if you're gonna close the show out with a bang. Um, and, uh, you can start. Uh, whenever you're ready. All right, thank you. So I want to take you on a journey today through the birth, maturation, and blending of Heaven Hill's 78% corn and 10% rye bourbon mash bill, and what I like to call the Heaven Hill Heritage Flight. So first up, we have birth, which is this Heaven Hill bourbon new make coming in at 62.5% ABV. This is what goes into the barrel and becomes bourbon. And I really think it's important to understand the foundation of a bourbon to really then appreciate what it becomes in the future. So just giving it a smell. This is really interesting. It has these like tequila-like lime notes as well as this like dry citrus and pine gin note. You know, I actually really like how it is. It's pretty straightforward, but you know, we have to keep in mind that it isn't bourbon just quite yet. Um, so with that said, next up we have maturation. So after 12 years, the new make, after 12 years of the new make aging in bourbon barrels, it becomes Elijah Craig barrel proof 12 year. This one coming in at 68.4% ABV. So you'll notice two things. First off, you'll see the day and night change in color. Uh, second, you'll notice that the ABV increased in 62 and a half, the 68.4% ABV. Um, and so kind of we'll get into this nose now. Wrong whiskey. So it's already really clear that there's like lime, uh, there's like tequila and Juno's completely gone, um, replaced with really rich and viscous caramel, honey, vanilla, citrus, and a little bit less of that cinnamon, um, and nutmeg, and dark chocolate. The, that 12 years in oak has cr turned this new bacon into this huge, big, and burly bourbon that I really like, and it has this like really crazy wild side to it as well. Now, kind of our last component, we have a blending with Luxro 12 year double barrel bourbon. This is supposedly sourced from Heaven Hill and has the exact same age statement as the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. So at least on paper, you should expect some similarities. Well, I'm here to show you that Luxro blended two barrels and created a completely different bourbon that I think is far superior to the Elijah Craig. Just giving a smell. Like this is just an incredibly luxurious bourbon. This one has a very refined, very focused, very matured toasted sugars, dry citrus, candy, ginger, as well as like bold yet gentle oak, tobacco, cinnamon, and dark chocolate. It also has this like Gouda cheese funk to it that actually reminds me of the Chateau de Lobade finish, you know, one of my favorites. Um, and it just really goes to show that Lux Row blended two barrels together just to create this otherworldly bourbon. It's pretty, it's almost gonna be top shelf plus as a spoiler. Um, but really kind of to round, wrap it all up, I think it's really interesting to you know, see and smell and taste how you know, Heaven Hill and Lux Road took the same new make, the same age statement, yet blended completely different bourbons. And it just goes to show that there's just so much variation and promise and potential in Heaven Hill's heritage in this new make. Thank you and cheers. Thank you and cheers, Alex. Uh, thank you for that wonderful presentation. Uh, very insightful, very educational. Um, and incredible tasting notes. So, so thank you for showing us uh, what you put together. Uh, it, was, it was lovely to listen to. And that concludes all of our flight presentations, everybody. I know that was uh, you know, a, a lot of uniqueness. A lot of people are coming in on the chats and, and showing their love for each one of these contestants and, and telling us why that they 
deserve to move on to the finals. They all deserve on to, to move on to the finals, to be quite honest. Uh, they each showed us something different, something unique, something brave, bold, wonderful tasting notes, um, and, and, and really do deserve to move on. So this is a, a tough race. I know that. I know these judges really have their work cut out for them as far as you know, handing us these scores after all these presentations. So what I would like to do next, while we allow the judges to kind of contemplate with everything that they saw and, and send our scorekeeper what their final scores are for each contestant, I would like to call out each judge one by one um, and just get some feedback, get some thoughts. Judges, if you want to uh, ask any of the contestants uh, a question, whether it be fun or serious. I think we're having, I'm, I'm getting some feedback behind the scenes that we're having a hard time uh, judging these presentations because everybody is doing so good. So let's start with John Hargrove, our COO. Uh, John, would you like to say anything to the group as a whole, highlight anybody's presentations or share with us what you thought about the entire event tonight. We would love to hear what you think. Yeah, thanks. Uh, first of all, this is the highest scoring round for me um, as far as the presentations uh, and just all around. That You guys represented a very knowledgeable group. Uh, it seems like a very experienced group and very proud to have all of you on here. Uh, for me, I, I saw the personal presentations, how it relates to you personally, and then the industry type presentations, and then some in between. So a vast um, window of presentation styles, which made it very hard to judge. Of course, like I say, I'm a quantitative person, so good luck to the winner, and you, you all deserve to be here tonight, and uh, keep your head up. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks for that feedback. Uh, I'm going to take it to Steve Nally next. Uh, Steve is our master distiller. Uh, he has been in the whiskey game for a long, long time. Uh, Steve, what? How many years have you been in whiskey altogether? Not just as master distiller, but but overall uh, in your career, how long have you been working in whiskey? Uh, just a short 48 years. 48 years. <laughs> just a short one. Ah, uh, yeah, just one can short. only dream. Awesome. Yeah. And, and you know, as somebody who's been in the whiskey industry for 48 years, I'm sure you have seen lots of flights. Uh, you've probably put together lots of flights. What, uh, what did you think about all of the presentations tonight and, and how Mid-Atlantic showed up to represent the region? You know, it's, it's very interesting to me to see, uh, you know, their thought pattern to where they derive these flights from. And, you know, I could see their, their thought pattern from personal experiences, uh, personal thoughts. And, and it's very impressive to me to, to see that presented. And, and I was very, very impressed. Uh, it made it very hard on our end to judge them, uh, you know, to bring our thoughts into how they presented them and, and to, to uh, get a feel for their thoughts. But I was very impressed with all of them. And, you know, it was a very exciting group. And like I said earlier, it was the biggest group that, that I've judged. And, you know, I'm just very impressed with all of them. And I hope that someday when all this craziness is over, that they get a chance to come to the distillery and experience uh, Barstown Bourbon and to view that beautiful room behind you and you know, just to experience the whole Barstown bourbon experience. Awesome, well, thank you, Steve. Uh, we are really excited to see who is moving on here from this very talented group. And we've got one more judge to get some feedback on. So last but not least, uh, let's hear it from the top sales guy himself, Mr. Herb Henneman. Herb, please don't hold anything back. What did you think about these presentations tonight? Oh, you, you know, I won't, Sam. And I, I first of all, I want to just call out the Mid-Atlantic, the East Coast crew for, for being what I feel has been the best round of um, World Stop Whiskey Tasted that we've seen, guys. This is the best turnout. I felt they were the highest quality presentation. So it did not make it easy on any of us as judges, I know, uh, to, to assign scores to these. I'll call out some individuals. And if I miss you, it's no diss on you. I'd love to have a drink with each and every one of you. 
I thought Alex was really cool. I mean, hacking Lux, that's a cool thing. Hacking the, the, the blending system. Um, you know, uh, Timothy, I love the history lesson. Um, I, I, I love the fact that, um, uh, you know, one of you guys brought in cigar pairings. I thought that was really cool. Forrest, you went beyond bourbon and talked about scotch. Charles, uh, I'd love to go quail hunting with you down in Alabama. That sounds, I mean, you're just so captivating. It was like time went so fast talking to you. Uh, Brad, what can I say? What an unreal presentation. Thank you for your service and your stories. They were all just so cool to hear. Um, unbelievable presentation from Matt. He had me in tears laughing my butt off. Alessa, I really love the props. I thought that was a really creative take. I learned a lot. Um, and your take on triplets and stuff. I mean, I felt like I was talking to a scientist. That was just epic. And then lastly, Tanya, I, I felt like I was really listening to like NPR or some podcast. I mean, I felt like super relaxed listening to you and, and uh, really the way you romanticized the bourbon was, was absolutely captivating. So congratulations to all. I thought everybody did a wonderful job. Uh, I have no idea how this is going to play out and, and who's going to be on top because, uh, you know, we're, we're fair and we trust the process, but I, I just want to congratulate everyone on the Mid-Atlantic for doing such a tremendous job tonight. Cheers. And cheers, Herb. Thank you for that uh, wonderful recap. Jeez, why don't we have you hosting this competition, Herb? <laughs> you might even look better in these sequins than I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, scary thought, Sam. <laughs> well, uh, it's certainly true words from everybody. Everybody really showed up tonight and, and gave us a really tough competition to judge. I am... I'm, I'm actually hearing uh, here in, in some behind the scenes comments that the judges would like an additional minute to deliberate uh, and, and kind of talk about some things amongst themselves, just to show you guys how incredible every single one of you did. Uh, we have not done this yet. Um, so we're going to take a short minute. And in the meantime, we're going to play uh, the last and final video of, of what we started to use as an internet down kind of filler uh, to actually give our judges a second to talk amongst themselves and decide exactly who the winner is going to be. So Nick, if you want to bring up this cute little video filler, I think of me kicking some butt, uh, go ahead and bring that up and our judges are gonna talk for just a minute. We are going to guess proof, age, and producer and see who is the closest out of those three. We are not going to share this round. We feel like we don't want to influence each other. We're going to analyze and then we're going to make our call. It's cool. Also, it's also the third round and we are tied one for one right now. So whoever wins this round moves on and uh, right. so we're not going to lead each other to believe anything. Silent, silent tasting notes. Best of luck to you. <laughs> Wish I could say the same. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> this is hard. Speak for yourself. I'm just kidding. It is hard. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> okay. Age proof producer, right? Am I allowed to write down on something? Peaks a lot. Don't. <laughs> I, I have one idea in mind, and that's. It's, it's a stretch, but I think, I don't want you to steal my thought. <laughs> I don't have producer written down. So if it's producer, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with my age and my proof. So if it's one of those, but I can't think of producers. And I'm not sure if this has an age statement is my problem. Cause I don't think it does have an age statement. Okay, I'm ready. You ready? Um, let me write down, I have producer. I'm just gonna write down the label that I'm thinking as well. But I don't know that it has an age statement either. Okay. Uh, but it's what it reminds me of. Okay. Okay. So we're going to reveal, uh, we are, we have written it down. So there's no changing. Uh, you want to go? Or you, uh, sure. uh, go would ahead. you, would you put for proof? 
I put 118. I put 105. Okay, age? I put 10 year. I put 12 year. Oh, we, he's asking oh, for space. Okay. All right, um, and producer? I put Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. I, that used to be age stated at 12 years, and I think they've taken the age statement off that product. So that doesn't fit to my 12 years. I put Buffalo Trace as producer and I, I was thinking in the Buffalo e. Trace. E.H. Taylor single barrel more specifically because okay. it's so fruity and I get fruity notes. Oh it's man. It's Buffalo Trace. Mm, is that, it not Buffalo Trace? That, uh, that is a weeded. <laughs> mm, I don't know if I can. And I you guess got weeded. Year, and, I got, got and I got, got 107, it. 10 year, and Buffalo Trace. Did I really just get all she three of those me. things? Mm. I'm not going to give you Buffalo Trace, but I'll give you the age and the proof. Who produces it? Ah, it's not. It's Buffalo Trace distillery, but it's not Buffalo Trace. It's a different map. But you win. I'm not saying you don't win. It literally win. comes off the stills from Buffalo Trace. All right. You win. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I got all three of those. That's pretty good. Woo! All right. Sam wins. All right. Thanks for hanging with us. Uh, as you can see, uh, that's that's kind of how world's whiskey, world's top whiskey taster started, and I am not a conservative winner. Uh, but. Uh, with that being said, let's let's get to what everybody wants to hear, and and that is, who are finalist for the Mid Atlantic Regional of World's Top Whiskey Taster is, and you know, before we do that, I, I want to let all the contestants know that we have never had to sidebar like that before, and and that just shows you how close this one was. I think. Honestly, every single one of you that competed tonight uh, could have been the world's top whiskey taster. Skip all of the finals. Uh, this could have been it right here. All of you did so, so wonderful. So I want to thank all of you for, for showing up, for entering at the beginning of the year and, and sticking with us through the pivots and the ups and downs of first you know, planning to have these events live and in person in the cities where you're coming from to to going to virtual last minute and, and complying with us all along to make this a wonderful event. You guys all are incredible whiskey tasters, uh, have incredible knowledge, and we can't thank you enough. In the spirit of gratitude, there are so many thanks uh, that need to go out, but I'll, I'll keep the list short and just highlight the people that could use some extra love. So uh, to the viewers, uh, that have been watching all of these events or have just been watching tonight. Thank you for tuning in on Facebook and YouTube to show your support to these contestants, to show your support to us. It really means a lot to us. We are happy to still uh, connect and engage in 2020 virtually the best way that we can. Thank you to our judges tonight, Herb, John, and Steve, who have very busy nine to fives, but we're more than happy to come and judge all the same. We still want to thank them for showing up tonight and giving their, their most honest uh, feedback about your presentations here, which were all wonderful. And for the people working behind the scenes that the viewers did not get to see tonight, I want to highlight a few people. So we had Michael Powell, our creative director who has also come in as a judge, but he has created everything beautiful that you have seen that has our logo on it, including our bottles, anything you see on the shelf, anything you see on our Instagram, uh, and everything World's Top Whiskey Taster has been this guy. So thank you so much, Michael, for everything that you have done. We also have Laurel Altman, our marketing director, who has been the point person for organizing the entirety of World's Top Whiskey Taster. So through the roller coaster of of live to virtual uh, and, and everything in between. Uh, she has been the one reaching out to you all and, and organizing all of these events. So a huge shout out to her. Also our scorekeeper tonight, Laurel Altman. Uh, and then uh, Nick Lewis, our DC, Maryland, East Coast, Mid-Atlantic, uh, the guy that has been communicating with you all contestants specifically. But not only that, he's been producing all of these behind the scenes with multiple monitors and so many windows open, ready to pull up those timers and those creative slides that Michael created uh, from Zoom, which nobody has really done to this extent before, and he is doing it 
perfectly. So thank you, Nick, for doing that tonight. I'm going to let him interrupt as he's done for eight events in a row. <laughs> thank you. At least I didn't have to interrupt myself now. Um, so uh, everyone, I'd like you all to raise a glass, please. Um, I'd like to say thank you very much to Sam um, uh, for being a wonderful uh, presenter this evening. Thank you. Thank you. But the cheers belongs to everybody. Thank you, Sam. Thank you so cheers. much. Cheers. Awesome. And with that being said, guys, it's it's time to reveal the winner. Um, this was uh, hands down, I think, as the event has showed, uh, the hardest competition to judge yet. Uh, so uh, we we love all of you. We hope that we continue to keep friendships and, and good relationships with each one of you. Um, I'm seeing a reunion in the future of the ten of you here at the restaurant with, with drinks and dinner and, and having maybe a, a private party here at Pete's place because you all deserve it. So with that said, uh, Nick, let's, let's show them the final scores and crown our regional winner for the Mid-Atlantic. And it's Matt Porter. Matt, thank you so much. Look at that celebration on screen. Let's 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 move yes, the camera Matt. over to him as quickly as possible. Matt, huge cheers to you, buddy. I I think that you had some tough competition. I think you gave some tough competition. I think everybody uh, here is is uh, you know pr probably not happy to lose, but uh, you know happy to lose to such a good contender. You did so great through the challenges. You gave such a heartfelt and, and happy and entertaining presentation. It is truly well-deserved. So uh, how are you feeling? Are you excited, uh, shocked? What's, what's going on? How do you feel about being the, the regional finalist for the Mid-Atlantic? I just, if my heart could do the talking, it would say between 160 to 180 BPM. It's cruising. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much this was like the competition day I, there's 10 people here i never i mean this is crazy so i don't know i, I i'm blown away this is fantastic i i went through my presentation over and over and over and over and over again and it was never perfect until i, I just did it so i felt like it was perfect that time and that's I, a good feeling yeah, that's a good really feeling good. so I, I knew that there wasn't anything else i could do and um just had to leave it in the judges' hands, and everybody else. The these presentations were amazing. Everybody did so so well, and I don't know. Just thank you so much. Thank you, Matt. Uh, we're super excited to bring you out to the distillery for the finals, and hopefully, everybody that competed here can can show up and uh, support you as as their you know regions contestant, right? And you know, uh, so support the Mid Atlantic, the East Coast and uh you know cheer you on to the finish line uh where we're so happy and we're so excited uh with that said everybody uh thank you for for everything and and thank you for everybody watching tonight uh this was our ninth out of ten regionals uh so we have one more to go we are hosting the texas regional semifinal tomorrow night at 6 p.m central 7 p.m eastern time same place Facebook page or YouTube channel. So if you want to see who the last uh, competitor of Matt's is going to be, uh, then tune in tomorrow night. I'll be here uh, and we will cap off the world's top whiskey taster regional semifinals then. So thank you so much for joining. Congratulations, huge congratulations to Matt and to all the contestants. You guys were all part of the first ever world's top whiskey taster uh, something that is surely going to grow and continue as the years go on. So uh, give your, all of you deserve a, a round of applause. Uh, so thank you so much. And with that, if you have some whiskey in your glass, cheers each other, love each other, have a good night, support each other, and we will see you next time. Good night, everybody.